Well, good afternoon. I'm back in Hertfordshire today. I'm on my own again. <laughs> and I'm starting from the village of Nut Hampstead. We're going to be visiting the small village of Anstey as well, which has a Mott and Bailey castle. And the walk is from the 50 Walks in Hertfordshire book by the AA. It's a four mile walk, should take about two hours. And got sort of a little light set up in the Osprey Strata 24 litre rucksack with me. I've also got, I think it's a French emergency NATO approved ration pack. It's only a small uh, kind of ration pack, as I say, for emergency. So it's got like some, uh, some like sort of biscuit type cereal block bars, uh, a couple of chocolate bars, I think, an energy gel and an isotonic drink powder. So we'll be having a look at that. Uh, at some point on the route because I'm a little bit hungry already so yeah we're starting from the Woodman pub here I'll probably pop in there later for a drink and I think we're heading down this way past the war memorial here to I think there's the remains of an airfield here we'll soon see on the way anyways enough talking let's get walking both Nut Hampstead and Anstey are delightful villages with a fascinating history. The only US Army Air Force air base to be built in Hertfordshire during World War II was constructed in Nut Hampstead. Initially it was a base for the 55th Fighter Group which escorted B-17 Flying Fortresses in daylight raids over Germany. This group arrived during a wet September in 1943 and quickly renamed it Mud Hampstead. But by April 1944, the 55th had moved to a base in Essex. Within a week, however, the 398th Bombardment Group, Heavy, had arrived and was to stay until the end of the war. During this time, Glenn Miller and his orchestra visited the base and performed in one of the hangars. One of the group's aircraft had the unusual name of How Was It? Well... It is thought the aircraft got its name as the chief crewman asked this question after each mission. It took part in 112 missions, the most of any 398th aircraft. After VE Day, the group's aircraft were used to take prisoners of war from Germany to France. The 398th completed 195 missions and lost 277 men during combat while stationed in Nut Hampstead. Those who died are commemorated on the impressive memorial beside the Woodman pub. The American Air Force constructed the airfield on Scales Park practically overnight, felling trees and levelling the area. The airfield eventually closed in 1959. The Forestry Commission planted conifers on the site of the original bomb store and the landowner is returning the area back to native forest show you this uh, emergency ration pack which I bought quite a while ago <clears throat> it's a uh, it went out of date on the 29th of November 2014 but it should be all right we'll see how it goes so it's a ration dirgence emergency food ration uh, approved by NATO so you get Four like biscuit bars. Uh, it says gel one isotonic, so I take it that sort of like a, a powdered drink or some type. Four energy bars, and you get one jelly isotonic drink, which I take it is like a, an energy gel. So it all comes in this packaging, as you can see. So nice and small weighs about 300 grams they reckon okay so let's get into this so we've got one vanilla energy bar two vanilla energy bars and then we've also got we've got what looks like a maybe a, a coffee energy bar bar commando <laughs> uh, there's our pack of biscuits, so energy biscuits, and they're all sealed up so they'll 
probably make a nice hiss when we open them try and get that on camera we've got one more energy bar they're only small should do the trick and we've got an energy gel punch power could be quite nice so give that a go and then we've got our isotonic drink sever agrooms I've no idea what flavour that's going to be orangey kind of colour to it. Okay, let's give this a try. It's a very weak flavour. I honestly don't know what that is. Sort of leaving some residue on the bottle. I think it's a very weak uh, like orange flavour. It tastes like it's got something else in it. It's not the nicest one, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I don't think that's got anything to do with the fact that it's out of date. I mean, it is, yeah, four years out of date, but it should be fine. I wouldn't want to have loads of those, put it that way. That's not the best one I've had, no way. But I suppose in an emergency, it would do. Let's have a look at this coffee-flavoured energy bar. They're only small, so it's just designed just to give you a little bit of energy just to keep you going I guess and that's it there yeah it smells of coffee mmm they're quite nice mm. it's not a really strong coffee flavour I'm trying to think of the texture of it it's almost like a like a milky way <laughs> Like coffee cake, like the icing on the coffee cake. Slight little crunchy bits in it. That's really tasty that. It sort of feels like it sticks to the roof of your mouth, like it's got a... Uh, makes it feel really slippery, but... Oh, they're good. And they're only small bars, but you really have to... I mean, they're soft, really soft, but you really have to sort of chew them to sort of digest them. Mm. that'll give you enough filling to keep you it'll fill you up enough to keep you going I reckon like a small pack Ooh. excuse me it should be more than enough for, for my walk so that's good next up let's try the vanilla one same looking sort of thing again doesn't smell a lot different from the other one to be honest very faint hint of vanilla that's not bad as well they're really good those energy bars, I like them a lot but then I suppose you have to design it like this so you can space it out space the calories out more you know in a small bar and then have another one later in the day, another one and just spread them out like that ok, next thing we're going to try out is these energy biscuits, so you've probably seen a lot of these in ration packs before let's see if we can uh, make that sound I don't think it hissed so they look something like that they're all sealed up at the moment two blocks anyway in the foil packaging we'll only try one of these these don't look the most appetising things I'm not going to lie they smell very bland ah. They break up quite easily. I don't know if that's if because they've gone off or they're very very dry. Only ever so slightly sweetened. It's like eating sawdust with a little bit of sugar in it. Definitely want something with them. I don't know actually if you could have the energy gel with it. I might try that actually. I'll try it on the other half. So let's have this first. 
Okay, so let's try our energy gel. Try to see what it smells like. I'll try a little bit on here as well on this other biscuit. Try a little bit out of the packet, see what flavour it is. I don't know what flavour that is, but it's punch power it says. I mean, I think if I was to eat this, it would have to be in a life or death situation. I mean, it is an emergency ration, so yeah, you you wouldn't eat this unless you had no other choice. Uh, I wish I bought an MRE now to review. <laughs> In a pinch it would get you out of trouble, but you wouldn't want to be eating this regularly. I mean, if this was what they was offering in the army on a regular basis, I'd desert. <laughs> Shoot me. <laughs> Makes that slightly more bearable, but... Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Not the best thing, but I can eat it though. The best things in the pack though are without doubt those little energy bars, the vanilla ones and the coffee ones, they're really good. This gel just looks awful, it looks like, it looks like the sort of stuff that like a snail leaves, you know that, like the snail trowel, like the, the goo, it's not great. That has been, uh, I think a French emergency ration pack approved by NATO, an emergency ration pack. So yeah, let us know if you tried these before. Yeah, I'm getting quite into doing these. It's quite fun. It's something different, really. Um, I like the novelty aspect of it. Sort of like a little package with a few little, you know, items of food and drinks and stuff. And you get to see if they work together and stuff like that. It's, uh, I can see why Andy enjoys them. And I can see why people enjoy them. They're, they're quite good. And they're definitely useful for if you're out you know walking while camping anyways right let's crack on with a walk It may be small, but the village of Anstey once had a castle. Its 35 foot, 11 metre stone keep was demolished during the reign of Henry III and used to construct part of the church. The lich gate outside St George's Church in Anstey is an unusual design with three roofed bays. One of these was bricked up in 1831 and used as the village lockup, which was still in use in 1914. Inside St George's, the rare Norman font depicts four mermen, the male version of a mermaid, each holding their tails, and is one of only two in England. Medieval military-style graffiti has been uncovered on the chancel walls, and nearby is a sketch of a man in Elizabethan dress.
Okay, apologies, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, whether the camera picks it up, but there's some 13th century graffiti, so that's, what, 1200s we're looking at? And it looks like, it's like a horse. Maybe sort of in sort of battle costume, I think. It's not the easiest thing to make out, but you can sort of see a shield there. There's definitely some shields there. This one here is by Thomas Momford, who was appointed rector in 1584. He inscribed his name in 1595. The horse, though, which uh, if I show you on the guidebook from the church, it looks something like that. And that is just here. Somewhere there you might just be able to make it out. Ain't that cool? Right, let's crack on with the walk. country lane now all the way back to Nut Hampstead and the Woodman pub where I'm gonna get a drink and of course the car is so the USAF Memorial beside the Woodman pub commemorates the 398th bombardment group which operated from here from 1944 to 1945 and begins with the group insignia heaven from hell all right so I've made it back along that country road back to the the Woodman pub here, the car's behind me over there. I'm going to head in, get myself a cheeky cider. That's the, the pub, pub there, yeah. This is, we were right in the middle, the pub was in the middle. So the, the runways which were taken up, mm. uh, all the hardcore went to build the M1. So you're pr talking the perimeter road, aren't you? Yeah. So if you come down this bit of grass here which you went where it says airfield yeah there's still a bit of concrete laying around here isn't there yeah that's it oh yeah i remember seeing that bit yeah so that would would have been part of the perimeter road you see the farmers just wanted their land back after the war they just yeah. so they took everything they memorabilia the word memorabilia hadn't been invented no <laughs> so you you know they just and then did you have you, how far did you go? Did you see the wooded area opposite the airfield? The opposite yeah, the runway? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, there was a wooded yeah. area. And then, That's um, called Scales Park. That's it, Scales Park, yeah, and I saw that. And it's 200 acres of woodland. Wow. 200 acres there. Wow. It's huge, yeah. I mean, that That's looks amazing. a bit... But this, this map was designed when the memorial was put up, which was 19... 
Uh, are we coming 85? Yeah, 82 they put the memorial up. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. Wow. It just they had groups that were interested in keeping everything, you know. No, oh, that's brilliant. All the history alive. Yeah, I just had a little tour from the landlady who uh, is also in charge of like the museum here. There's like a museum just at the back here. I didn't know this on the history of like the airfield here and uh, in relation to the pub. Her name's Sandy by the way. She's been absolutely brilliant. She's told me so much stuff. Yeah, I think it's just behind me here. And she's also kindly shown me around the pub all the old photos of all the American pilots and planes and stuff. So that's included in this video, as you've probably seen. And uh, I was absolutely amazing, probably an hour or so. And uh, some other bloke was just leaving. And I think he said, uh, he briefly said, what's like the history on this place? And she went, right how long have you got <laughs> and she went how long has it taken tom and i went sandy it's taken us over an hour and he went oh don't worry then and she's grabbed him and she's taken him on a tour now as well bless her absolutely brilliant anyways yeah just thought i'd just tell you about that so yeah thanks to sandy and the woodman pub here i'm definitely going to be popping back so yeah cheers for watching everyone hope you enjoyed all that history and i'll see you again soon bye